my name is uh, Aristide Atanasiadis. I'm chair of uh, Circular Economy and Urban Metabolism at the Université Libre de Bruxelles. And uh, I share this chair with my colleague uh, Stefan Kampelman, but I'm also the co-founder of the um, non-profit organization called Metabolism of Cities. And in general, what I do is uh, research on uh, urban metabolism. Um, I analyze uh, cities, their flows. I try to compare cities between themselves to try to understand if there are any commonalities. Uh, I also try to understand what are the drivers behind these flows and also the, the creation of their stocks. And more recently, uh, since the, the chair, I also try to understand uh, how um, urban metabolism and circular economy are related, but also how urban metabolism can be applied uh, or is it applied in policy and in practice. The first time I heard about uh, urban metabolism, I think, was back in 2010. Um, and back in the day, I was doing uh, a master thesis research. And, um, and what I wanted to do was uh, a life cycle analysis. Uh, well, no, uh, actually what happened is that I heard the word life cycle analysis. A friend of mine was doing life cycle analysis for buildings. And I was very intrigued by the, the whole concept of following a product or an object from the extraction to uh, the, the waste processes. So every phase of this project, uh, of, of this uh, product, sorry, from the beginning till the end. And I was quite fascinated by, by this methodology and I said to myself, perhaps we could do that at the scale of the city, not, not only the, the, the construction material, not only the building, but perhaps the city level. And then a lot of questions were added to that. How many objects do I take into account? Is it enough or how do I classify all of those flows and all of that? And I asked some questions to a, to a professor and um, he mentioned the term um, urban metabolism. And uh, I was surprised uh, by, by this metaphor at the beginning and then I did some research and I found a number of articles quantifying all of the flows entering and exiting cities. And, I was completely, um, well, really interested by, by this topic. And I said, okay, this is the topic I want to focus on. But then by reading uh, more and more, I kind of saw some other papers that were discussing urban metabolism and didn't have this quantitative aspect. I remember the, the paper of Matthew Gandhi in 2004 about uh, something about urban metabolism and water. Um, and it had almost no figures on it, almost no tables in it. And I was very surprised. At that stage, I, I thought that this is not what I, th well, I thought this is not urban metabolism. At least that's not what I thought was urban metabolism. Um, and it took me some time to understand that actually urban metabolism is not a coherent whole or a consolidated field. Um, that has only one definition. A number of researchers use different definitions. And um, that's when I, I got interested into as well the, the different aspects more and more of urban metabolism. As I said before, I'm a urban metabolism researcher, so I, I mainly research on, in this topic. What I do with it is mostly, again, uh, understand uh, quantify some flows and understand how this is related with the functioning of a city. I feel it's very important to quantify flows because first of all you you have a, a solid baseline of what is happening in a city but also you eliminate some ideas some bad ideas that you thought was were good ideas meaning that um, if you quantify some flows you know how many you have in your city, you know how much um, how much of that would result into developing new jobs or developing uh, new spaces to uh, to for storage or for recycling. Uh, what type of infrastructure you would need? Uh, what are feasible solutions and what are uh, unrealistic ones? So I really think that by measuring flows, you already understand. Uh, more of the physicality of your city, but I also use it to 
to better communicate with um, um, city officials and administrations um, to figure out whether their mobility plans or waste plans or other plans um, are conflicting. Uh, the energy plan with the water plan, perhaps they have very common challenges that urban metabolism lens can help us to, to um, well, to, to, to make something more coherent or to negotiate between one and the other. Um, but also it really helps us to, to create a dialogue, uh, to create a dialogue amongst many people. Because what I understood, as I, as I mentioned before, is that urban metabolism is not only about um, quantifying flows, but also understanding who are behind the flows, who control, who govern the flows, who is losing by uh, by some flows who is winning by other flows and therefore it's more of a negotiation and um, coordination uh, tool that can help uh, many stakeholders uh, come around the table and discuss about some bigger urban challenges This metaphor has been used. Uh, uh, I did an urban metabolism study for the Brussels region, so for Bruxelles Environnement back in 2014. Um, and back in the day, it was a very dry analysis of flows with a methodology and some action points that we found very promising. What, what were the promising sectors and some promising actions to make the, the city more circular? So this preceded already the circular economy plan of uh, Brussels. And back in the day, I thought urban metabolism was just um, a quantitative tool. But uh, because it was, it was commissioned by two different um, administrations, uh, one was state of environment, the other one was uh, transitional economy or the new economy, um, I quickly understood that it's not just about quantification, it's also about uh, how urban administrations can, can, can use this tool to answer their own challenges. And their own, the challenges of these two administrations were, were very different. And that's where I understood that actually, well, urban metabolism brings forward some challenges that, are, that can be answered by different uh, point of views. And therefore, I think what happened in the, the last uh, five years we kind of discovered new applications of urban metabolism. Urban metabolism is not just a dry uh, inspection of numbers and developing a baseline and a monitoring uh, a framework of flows. This is one essential part, but other parts also start to appear. Um, urban uh, and territorial development, for instance, is now really connected to it. So what type of city do we have? How the city that we have and the city that we want to have is going to affect or be affected by flows. So there is a whole new discipline around this. There is a more and more political ecology. So the, the, the politics of actors and also the agency of actors uh, behind the flows that is now uh, getting revealed. But also, the, there is behind all of these um, action plans, there is no coherent tool so far to, to help steer uh, regions and cities around these complex issues. And uh, urban metabolism could have the, let's say, the, the possibility to, to provide a systemic understanding and at least a lens to, to better understand um, challenges that might seem uh, diverging, but at the same time, they are happening in the same city. So we need to find a solution and we need to find something that is good for all the challenges simultaneously. Um, I think what also happened um, over the last uh, five years is that we've done some trial and error. Um, we've rediscovered what happened with Duvigno and his colleagues as well. We have uh, seen what happened elsewhere as well. So I think we're getting a bit more mature uh, um, with a group of researchers and also policymakers and some practitioners. We're starting to get to get a more um, common um, debate, uh, 
start to understand as well together in the same way um, and we're building a, a common um, trajectory I think um, that's not to say that uh, there is not conflicting views and diverging opinions on on the you know on the challenges and how to resolve them but I feel that there is some vocabulary that um, that is converging that urban metabolism can be a useful tool that it's not only about numbers um, that it encapsulates as well urban manufacturing the productive city um, it encapsulates uh, challenges of circular economy sometimes of nature-based solutions so it has become a, a broader concept that uh, tries to, um, to, to to bring together people and to answer even further challenges than material flows. It's still a, a relatively new word. I mean, we've seen it being used uh, already for five to more years in 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 Brussels. Well, if if you take into account Duvigneau's work and his team's work, uh, that's already forty years ago. But uh, over the last five years, you can see it here and there in some documents and policy in practice, uh, much more in academia. Um, there is a strong um, regiment of researchers that is now behind this field. And I feel that in Brussels, uh, well, in Belgium, sorry, we have a, a strong team of, uh, of people that is behind this concept. But um, I feel that we're still figuring it out. Uh, there is no real consensus. Uh, uh, some people use it for um, urban uh, design, other people use it from an industrial ecology and methodological point of view, other people use it for uh, governance, other people use it from an operational uh, point of view. So a lot of different facets, um, other people use it from a hi history point of view. So a lot of different facets, um, none is really uh, um, predominating. Uh, I feel that we we're in this phase that we're exploring the the next um, the next phase. Uh, we're at we're exploring the the next use of urban metabolism. We're exploring how we're gonna really uh, uh, settle and perhaps um, uh, and perhaps uh, converge towards um, a tool that can accept many disciplines at the same time. I think right now we're struggling to, to make it a multidisciplinary or a transdisciplinary field. We're all bringing our, our, our small stone towards the, the bigger um, building that is um, urban metabolism, but um, we're still struggling to, to connect all of these pieces together. What I hope with urban metabolism in the future is that um, that it becomes a common ground, um, that it's something that we can use collectively um, amongst a, a vast range of stakeholders. So not only researchers, not only within researchers, not only industrial ecologists, so people that are really quantitative. I really hope that it's going to become... Um, just a basis, uh, a basic layer of understanding that we can stack things upon it and make our understanding even more complex. But also um, to, to take it out of academia. Um, I think a lot of things have been happened over the last 40 years in academia. Uh, and yet it's still not very usable today in other fields. Um, it's still about understanding and less about acting. And so I, help, I, I hope it's going to become a, um, a, not, a, not something that offers clear guidelines and uh, operational tools, but at least um, to have a better interaction or feedback loops between what happens in practice. Uh, so between um, a very specific action in the, on the ground and then uh, going back to what is the policy behind it uh, has this policy really changed any of the metabolism of a city and then we on as researchers 
kind of analyze those and then also go on the ground to better understand which actions work, which do not. So I really hope this is this tool and this gonna help us to better uh, collaborate between um, uh, between fields, so between researchers, uh, policymakers, and practitioners, um, and and just be the tool that help us be around the same table and challenge ourselves um, with similar tools, a similar language, a similar analytical tools, similar visualization tools. So I think w what we lack today and what urban metabolism can help us with is to develop a certain amount of common tools that um, well that will help us rediscover some challenges that are are predominantly based in one of the three categories. I think what's great in in Belgium right now is this um, this group of people that's behind this topic and um, it's not uh, recent so we've we've built that over time um, and I think there is this real envy to, to to change things and to to make things happen and uh, we share uh, a number of people share this feeling um, and we we share that doing work on or on our own is not sufficient so we are very eager to hear what our colleagues uh, elsewhere are doing and how can we be uh, helpful to them and how they can help us in our own endeavors and so because there are so many projects events etc etc on the topic we get to see the same people over and over again and uh, we get to have a, a small family of people that that uh, share the same concerns and want things to to move faster and m forward and um by st so by finding each other and by discussing uh, you know between uh, coffees and things like that we we th are thinking about okay how do we go from you know um five minute talks between uh, between coffees in a in a, an event to something more structured where we find time and we dedicate time to see each other and to work together um, we for that I, I really think we need some neutral places and neutral um, where we find each other and no we take out of our our personal hats which is a academic hat or a policymaker hat and we just keep our expert hat so we know a bunch of things around this topic we enter the room and we we share with others on uh, our expertise and um, and we forget about kind of the um, obligations that all of us have in our own topic um, so I think to structure this community we need a place we need to, f to find each other relatively frequently uh, every couple of weeks every month or something like that we need to have a common place where information is there uh, where we don't have to to find all over again uh, documents and data and plans and all of that we have all of this information it's there and we can directly go to cut to the chase and and work there and we also need the topics we need common topics that we try to work from a to z together and so we discover the facets of all of these challenges together um, so we get into each other's shoes again i think well this relates very much to the previous question which is um we need to have a very similar um, approaches we need to have similar places um, tools I really think that we need some analytical tools that that are common to everyone of course we're not all all into analysis but uh, if we manage to to have one place where everything is stored where everything can be easily visualized and on top of that we can build some models to say what will happen to one of our cities if that 
and then we test scenarios and these scenarios can help us negotiate say this is not the future we want for brussels uh, antwerp or any other city or for a region um, but today it's more we're guessing many things because we don't have any any solid um, well, we, we have a good understanding of things by looking in the past, but we struggle to, to kind of build many scenarios for the future. And I think by putting associations, uh, citizen groups, and all of that behind these scenarios, behind these possible futures, we, we can then feel involved into, into a future. Um, right now, we're more defensive. We don't want something, but we, we don't know yet what is the future we want because we don't know all of the potential futures so i really think that if we have these analytical tools visualization tools understanding tools that we build all together we can really uh, step up and bridge these um, three um, well these three fields um, just some uh, last thoughts um, and going back to what has changed since the last uh, the masterclass that had been done, the designing with flows masterclass that was co-organized by um, a number of people, including OVAM, uh, architectural worker in Brussels, and metabolism of cities. I think there was a lot of energy back in the day, and it's not lost. It perhaps uh, dissipated in many other efforts. So a lot has changed and been developed since then. But I feel that. Uh, that's the the challenge is the dissipation how do we manage to keep the momentum and to understand that we're still doing the same thing um, we might do it in many other um, projects and events simultaneously uh, but it's still there we're still trying to better understand better analyze better communicate with our peers uh, but we need to have this common exchange this common exchange can be uh, through um, continuous engagement and communication, uh, small videos, podcasts, uh, text, uh, whatever, uh, but continuous communication to keep this community alive. Um, continuous informal events, um, but also bringing other people on board. We just mingle with people that we know, we just mingle with people that agree with us, but it's very high time that we include um, practitioners, um, citizens uh, that are not familiar with what we do, that do not understand why this is relevant and perhaps it's not relevant for them. Um, so really, we really need to, to make some extra effort to communicate to outside and, and uh, to outside of our common um, uh, people and peers. Uh, and figure out what makes more sense, what are the preoccupations, what are the, um, the worries of, uh, of our colleagues that we can then help um, transform our, our common tools to answer this type of questions.